Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today we're gonna to look at the 14th game in my Spiel des Jahres series. The Spiel des Jahres is the German game of the year. And today we'll look at the 1989 winner of the award, and this is Cafe International. And this is a style placement game where players are going to be placing characters of different nationalities and genders at a series of specifically marked uh, tables within a cafe in order to score points. Um, this game it was designed by Rudy Hoffman. It's for ages, the box is ages 13 plus. I think younger players might be able to play it, but not much younger, maybe around 10 or 11, I think would do fine at the game. And it plays in about, um, maybe about 30 to 45 minutes for two to four players. Um, I'll take a moment to show you how the game works and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts on it. So here we have a setup for Cafe International a few turns into the game, and um, I've just simply placed a few tiles to help with the explanation. The game will start with a clean uh, slate, however. And in this game, players are going to have characters of multiple nationalities and genders. So for example, I suppose this would be a Turkish female, whereas this would be a Spanish male. And players will be placing them into these seats in the cafe in very specific requirements. So you'll notice that each table has a flag associated with it. And sometimes those tables are seated next to each other so that they are influenced by two different flags. So for example, this here is both uh, influenced by France and America. So this seat, either a French person or an American person could sit here. Whereas this one, either a French person or an Indian person would be able to sit there. Also, the uh, guests have specific requirements about gender. Um, they don't want to be sat next to people only of their own gender. So for example, you could not place, let's say over here, um, two African women next to each other without any men present at the table. One man and one woman is fine. If you had an extra woman there, that would be fine. But then the last table or spot at the table would have to be a man. So you always have to keep those uh, genders in balance and you always have to respect the placement rules for nationality. So on your turn, with that in mind, the things that you're going to be doing is you're going to either be placing one or two tiles onto the board. You are going to be sending a tile to the bar, which means you just basically discard them, taking the points of depicted on the next available space. They start out positive and then will become negative over the course of the game. Or you could swap out a tile for a joker, and I'll explain how that works in a moment. So um, let's say it was this player's turn. Um, they would be able to place two tiles. So for example, this would be a very good placement here because it completes this table. And then they might choose to place this uh, joker here. As a, Since it's a joker, it could count as any nationality, but you have to respect the uh, gender of the joker. So here, a female, this would work. So that would be their two placements. They would score. The scoring works that you're going to get points for the uh, place number of people that are at the table. So this would be worth one, two, three, and this would be worth one, two, three, four. So seven points for that player. And then they would draw tiles back up to refill their hand till five. All right, and now it would be this player's turn and they would be able to just, again, place one or two tiles. Generally, you're not gonna wanna send people here unless it is your only possible move. So let's say they send this African woman here, and then um, they send this German woman here. That would be their two moves. And I should note that your tiles are kept face up so other players will be able to see what you have. Um, this figure here would score one, two, three, and this figure here would score both tables. So she would score one, two, plus one, two, three, so a total of five. So that player would get points for both tables in this circumstance because this figure was on both sides of the table. Now we'll go back to this player and they could do two interesting things. Um, first of all, they could spend their entire turn if they wanted to, to swap out this um, Italian woman for this Joker. And by doing that, they just reclaim the Joker, to, which is you know very uh, versatile, but they could, that would take their whole turn. So that'd be one possible option. Their second possible option would be is if they completed this table, they would still be able to do a second placement. So for example, they could do that and place this uh, Turkish woman down here. So she would score one, two points. This guy here completing this table would score four points. But because they've completed this table with everybody of the uh, same nationality, that's essentially gets you a bonus. And the option is 
that when they draw back up, they could choose to draw one fewer tile. So they would reduce their hand size to four, which is bad because it gives them fewer choices for placement on their turns. But it's good because at the end of the game, every tile that you have left remaining in your hand will be minus five points. So this is how the game's gonna keep going back and forth with you know players exercising those three options, either swapping out for a joker, um, placing one or two tiles into tables at the board, or sending someone to the bar. And the game will just keep going like that until um, one of four things happens to uh, trigger the end of the game. Either every chair in the entire cafe is filled, that would end the game, until a player, by completing like sets at various tables, gets rid of their last tile, and then they don't need to draw something back, that would end the game, until, until the uh, bag runs out of tiles. If just the uh, last tile is drawn from the bag, the game would end immediately. Or if um, the last bar space is taken up. So somebody takes this minus 14 space, so the 20th space. So any of those four things would end the game. At the end of the game, you'll just add up the uh, points that players have collected during the game, minus five points per tile that they've gotten, and the player with the uh, most points would be the winner. Okay, so that's Cafe International. And this is a game that I think to a certain degree, in many respects, shows its age. Both, you know, the graphic design of it, both the board itself, and then also the uh, character art, which is, you know, it looks kind of like The Simpsons maybe, but it has this kind of, you know, frankly stereotypical um, use of um, caricature on it, which some people might take objection to. I personally don't, but I could see why that might be the case. Even when the game was just reprinted, although it's from 1989, they did keep the same artwork. So I think that you know most people don't find it offensive or anything, but I just thought I'd mention that. But also, you know, in the mechanics, which are very constrained, it's interesting. When you first start this game, and the first time you, you play it, it will seem like you have absolutely no choice in the matter about what you have to do because of how tight those, you know, placement rules are. You have to both observe the gender rule and you have to observe the nationality rule. So it feels sometimes like you have very little choice in the matter about where you're going to place tiles. Um, but having played this game as often as I have, I can assure you that that's not true. Uh, the game, you know, essentially every turn you're gonna be getting a few points, but there are gonna be turns where you get bi a big number of points and essentially either capitalizing those on yourself, which sometimes will require saving tiles over a number of turns, or just placing tiles to prevent other players from capitalizing on that becomes where the game really exists. And it's something that's subtler than f might first appear. I will also mention though, because of those placement rules, it's all too easy to, um, especially when you're first playing the game, to essentially make illegal moves. And you essentially have to have each move vetted by people um, when you're playing it for the first time or two, I think. Because ignoring the gender rule or the um, nationality rule is pretty simple to do. The board has a lot of information on it, even though it's you know relatively straightforward. It's just very easy to accidentally make a mistake when you're placing. Um, so just having other players watch each other's moves is a, a good thing to do in this game. But overall, I think that this is a game that you know hasn't exactly aged elegantly. You know, it's a game that has somewhat convoluted scoring rules, somewhat convoluted um, um, placement rules, and some you know luck of the draw in it. And also, you know, just the, you know, it looks like an older game. But at the same time, it is an activity or a game that I find to be relatively enjoyable. And I think that I've you know, enjoyed my plays of it and I'll continue to play it in the future. Um, as far as, you know, I, I don't think that it would necessarily win the Spiel des Jahres today, especially not with this theme, which is a little bit weird and, you know, somewhat objectionable. But I think at the same time, you know, I can't deny the fact that I enjoy playing the game. So um, that is Cafe International. And um, thanks for watching.